So my name is Dr. Luella Tony Lewis. Luella is my grandmother, um, passed away nine months before I was born. So I feel like we high-fived, you know, on the way across. Uh, Tony is my favorite auntie who passed away in 97. He was a social worker in the South side of Chicago. And Lewis is my father's side from Tennessee and from Nashville and, you know, all the educators and things. And I am a black woman in 2020, which as you all know, qualifies us to say a few things. But I'm here to serve you with the receipts of being a family doc and geriatrician. I'm also a uh, yoga instructor and a dancer, but I spent a lot of time in labor as a labor leader and also a political strategist. So just like many of the black women on this call, I am a multi-hyphenate. I do a lot of things, but truth be told, I was inspired watching my mama and my auntie and my grandmoms growing up and my, my goal was to continue their work love up on their footsteps and also to take care of them because I watched how hard they worked, you know? And so as I started my journey towards medicine and being a doctor and working towards just healing and health for our people that made sense to us, because I always felt like people didn't really listen to us the way that we should be valued and respected. Um, it would be fascinating how when I started my residency in New York City, I noticed how much our neighborhoods were under attack in terms of the health systems and the services. You know how this looks, right? How many of y'all look at the, you know, know folks that are trying to find healthcare, trying to find wellness, and it just, it's just rough. And the first budgets to get cut and the first things, right? And so, so as I became a elected labor leader and would be, you know, talking policy, you know how this goes, talking policy, you're, you know, at these tables, we're all at these tables, because I am a black woman and a doctor, and because I have that look that many of us have, this is the look that this country is comfortable with kind of asking questions to people would always pull me aside and say, how can I take care of myself? Or something's going on with my chest pain, or something's going on with my life. And how many of you have that experience of just being somewhere doing something completely different than someone comes to you with the most personal of personal things? Yeah, that's how it is. So that's how I kind of curated this space of figuring out how it is we take care of ourselves no matter what the spiritual assignment is, right? Because some of us pick up the phone and can move cities, states, countries, globes, yes. Some of us move our entire family and that's, that's a little bit of a thing to carry. And so it is possible to find time for your mind, body and spirit because I think it benefits us all as much as possible to be able to pour from fullness instead of from the dregs, you know? So with that, I wanna start actually with a little bit of meditation, if that's okay with people. I'm gonna play a little bit of music and we're gonna do a body scan because before we get into the fullness of meditation, mindfulness and joy, um, I think it'd be good to just kind of check in and see how we're doing. So just bear with me and get, and yes, Dr. Janetta Cole, I appreciate and love you so much. <laughs> so here comes some music. I want you to invite you to close your eyes and just relax for a second. And I'll check in with my textbooks to see if they can hear. Somebody give me a thumbs up if you hear some music kind of going in the background. Yes, thank you. All right, so I invite you just relax yourself wherever you are sitting Climbing out. and feel free to close your eyes feel free to turn off your camera feel free to move around your room whatever it is that you need to do if you need to get a pillow for your back if you need to lie on the floor on your yoga Climbing mat do out. all of those things but whatever it is and I want you to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. Breathing is a revolutionary act. So just let's take a couple more deep breaths in and breathe out. Yes. So now take a moment quietly to yourself to say I I am here, I am here, I am here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And now we're gonna do a little bit of our body scan to see how we're really doing. So just follow my words, my instructions. Keep your eyes closed or open or whatever's comfortable to you. We're gonna start at the southernmost bottom part of your body. For some of us that's toes, for others it might be knees or hips. But wherever it is, I want you to move them around. They're toes for you. Just I want you to wiggle your toes, your left, on your left foot and on your right foot. If we're already at your hips, just go ahead and move those around. I want you to do what you do. Uh-huh, I see some beautiful yawns. That means your body needed this breath. Five and out. We're gonna work our way up to your ankles and just rotate those around to the right, to the left. Even though we're not wearing as many heels, our ankles and our toes and all those things still need some love. way up to your calves and again this is your body so I may say wriggle back and forth you may just have to reach down and massage get out that charlie horse or that shin splint but just see how that that leg is feeling how that lower part of your body is feeling some cricket and cracking that might be my 49 year old dance knees coming through the microphone I'll ask you to forgive me and pray for them but move your knees around or just rub them give them some heat from these uh, 98.6 degrees that's in your hands right there and now work your way to your thighs I always think of Dr. Maya Angelou when we talk about thighs and black women's thighs, right? Mm-hmm. Rub them, move them, flex them. And now to our hips, our buttocks, our left and right, whatever it is, move it back and forth in your seat. Shift to the left, to the right. You've got some 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Do that and then go the other way. There's so much that goes through our pelvis and our hips. Think about it. And I invite you to massage those muscles. There's lots of muscles in there. So massage, move around. Mm hmm So we're now in our stomach and our lower back. So take another deep breath in and breathe out. And in your stomach, I want you to push it all the way out, push it over the edge and then bring it all the way in. Just massage all your organs. <laughs> do what you need to do. And then in your chair or your seat or wherever you are, we're going to do a little bit of a twist to get at that lower back. Let's see how we feel. So if you're in your chair, I want you to turn to your left in whichever way makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit if you don't have to go all the way. But just see how that feels. And as you turn to your left, take your left hand and just rub your lower back and see what you feel in there yourself a little massage and when you are ready and your body calls turn to the other side turn back mm -hmm. give another massage mm -hmm. yes for those yawns bringing in all that extra oxygen that your body has wanted So if this is comfortable to you, I want you to take your time and bend over and 
touch your toes. If you are on the floor, you can bend forward and touch your toes. If you are in a chair, you can bend and just take your time and feel how that stretches out your lower back. Mm -hmm. And just hang there for a second. And then just slowly, like you're the most beautiful because you are a soul trained dancer, solid gold dancer, all the things. Come up as if you're stacking one vertebrae at a time. And take your time. And then open your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yes. Notice what you're feeling. Lovely. Mm -hmm. So I want you to take your hands, warm them together. Again, 98.6, we got our own little heating pads all the time. Just warm them together, right? And as we make our way from our stomach and back to our chest, I want you to place those hands right over your heart, right in the center of your chest and feel that warmth. And just take a deep breath in there. Breathe in. Breathe out. We as black women spend so much time pouring out of our hearts. Our hearts broken, having our hearts filled with love, being with our sisters. Just take a moment and heal into, pray into, love into those hands, into your heart. Your chest. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. And now I want you to open, open your hands, open your heart. Now it might be here, it might be here, it might be all the way wide, just to kind of open and stretch it out and invite some love, some healing, some breath, and just, just feel it, just open it. Mm -hmm. I see you flying, Dr. Deborah. yes. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is, open it. And then I want you to bring it back in and give yourself a hug. We're a little low on hugs these days with all of this physical distance and give yourself some. Feel that warmth. Let's do that one more time. Open up, open right, out. Yawns are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Got it. And then all the way back in, give yourself that hug. Yep. Lovely. Now we're already here with our shoulders. You know, our shoulders, neck, head, those are the things that, boy, when you have a day, it's coming. So I see Nikisha already giving me some shoulderography there. So let's rotate these shoulders. Give me the right, give me the left. Give me your Diana Ross, your Beyonce, whoever you got. Give me the other side and then rotate them the other way around. for ourselves. Take the time to love up on our bodies. So as you settle, get ready with those hands once again to give yourself some more. Mm -hmm. Get around your neck. You know the muscles. You know the ones that need it. Start around here. Massage your own shoulders, the ones you just moved. Ooh, I don't know about y'all, I'm a little tight. I'm a little tight in my neck, my back, my left hip. That's what's happening with me today. That other side. Take time. And then get to like kind of the base of your head, where your head meets your spinal cord, that little area. Just take your time with your thumbs, with your fingers my favorite part of the hair appointment. Getting all up in the scalp. And just right in your temples too. Just be right there with your hands. <clears throat> and when you are ready, I want you to just relax. 
and rest your hands on your lap, on the desk, with your palms facing up to receive what it is you don't even know you need. And I invite you to think about a couple of things. First of all, what did you notice? How are you? Like really, how are you, you know? And think about what do you need? How are you and what do you need? And I invite you to pop in the chat some of the things you notice. Most often I hear from folks, they didn't realize their neck was as tight as it was. Their back was a little bit something or they just needed that time. So how are you? How are you sisters? What did you notice in the, okay, I see some thumbs up. Is there anything you notice you need to tend to a little bit later? Mm -hmm, I see some thumbs up. So that's one tool you can do in 30 seconds or in two hours. You can imagine you could spend all day doing that little body exercise, right? Just to check in with yourself. Because sometimes, and especially in these kind of COVID times and these times when so much is, is, is on us, it makes sense for us to check in every once in a while so that we know our body head to toe, you know? So anything else that people notice during that, I see, I never feel my heart. I needed to be still. Mm. Feeling good, necks and shoulders, yes. And look, again, 98.6 right here. You can also take a little towel, put it in the microwave, steam, heat. Didn't realize my shoulders were not stiff, needed to relax. Mm -hmm. The self hugs are so much fun. I invite you to try that with your chapters, with your people, because it's always good just to see a whole bunch of black women loving up on themselves. But yeah, and thank you for that. <laughs> Lots of yawning. Mm -hmm. Our body craved that oxygen. So yeah, as we talk about like kind of, hmm, meditation, mindfulness, and joy. It's always good to kind of know where we are so we can be grounded on how we are and who we are to get ready for whatever our spiritual assignment is. So I invite you to do that all the time and find your favorite music, find your time. You can do that behind your desk. You can put time on your calendar to do a body scan. You could put a five minute, 15 minute block somewhere on your calendar because I know that's one of my favorite tools. Um, for maintaining when I'm running multiple things in multiple countries and multiple campaigns, you know, and working with family is kind of putting time somewhere. That's like the time for me to check in and put my mask on first. So I invite you definitely to do that. And it's, it's interesting to me that like a lot of times we throw around these terms of meditation and mindfulness, but for me, that's just my mama telling me to sit on the porch, you know, um, <laughs> tell me to get quiet when the storm comes. Right. Um, listening really deep to music, you know, like really, really getting in there with the notes and the voices. Um, any way that you can find an opportunity for stillness to get quiet, to hear what you need to hear, um, can be meditation and mindfulness, right? And I don't know about y'all. I know I keep saying that. I'm going to see you. Well, that's okay. Y'all get me, right? We're family. You'll get me. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but at the beginning of this, I started thinking if I match up everything that has um, been poured into me, that I've been graced with, with all of the things that the world needs right now, I would be running 24 seven all the time. I would never sleep. And so for me, I need that quiet time to decide where it is I'm supposed to enter, what it is I'm supposed to do. And so what are the other tools that you all use to get quiet, to, learn to listen to get to to get tuned into your spirit let's pop it in the chat and share with each other prayer yes indeed Oof. my prayer every day is to send me what i don't even know i need with ease and to order my steps early morning walks alone yes i feel like i've been getting up earlier and earlier because i need to try to do that before the world gets started you know um, to get my quiet, deep breathing, lots of yoga, silence. Ooh. 
I actually kind of in, in Brooklyn, New York, which is where I live right now, I'm from rural Southern Illinois. So I'm a country girl at heart, population 900, where my mom is now. But I am in bed -Stuy, Brooklyn. I remember when we could hear the birds so much, when things were really quiet at the beginning, and how that was just um, really grounding for me, actually, just to know the divine was there, sitting on my deck and enjoying the open space. Mm -hmm. Classical music. So this is all not just mindfulness and meditation, but medicine, right? Like, like I want you, and this is Dr. Tony giving you this as a prescription, that these things that we use that engage the senses and keep us quiet and keep us grounded and keep us peaceful in these moments when folks want us to be like running ourselves into the ground. And how many of us know at least one sister who's really, really hurt right now that we just want to love up on? I got folks in the hospital and the whole night. Doing my makeup, yes, for the meditation of getting your face. Mm -hmm. I love it. And all the things. But yeah, this, these tools, I want you to consider these tools and share them with each other to, um, as, as medicine, just like you would take a prescription, <laughs> just like you get up and go to the bathroom. Like you need to drop all these tools in and Yes, it's, you know, you call it mindfulness or meditation, but it's just your spiritual toolkit for like moving through the world. And so I also like to think of it as, you know, thinking about, you know, our senses, right? Like what are the smells that bring you joy and calm and ease? Hey neighbor, Beth Stuy, Carol E. Moore, I see you. <laughs> I'm on Hancock Street. I see a lot of lavender, yes. So lavender, lavender plants, lavender oils, lavender teas, the whole nine. Yes, all of those things. And vanilla. And you know what's interesting? It doesn't always have to be an essential oil. What do you have in your kitchen cabinet that makes you feel, you know, a little cinnamon in a pot? Some vanilla, some things like that. So your senses, right? So that's your smells, baking cookies. What about your tastes? I saw jasmine tea. Uh, my mom does lemon water, hot lemon water <laughs> is the thing every day, you know, sometimes a little bit of warm cider. Um, yeah, different things. Comforting ease. What about touch? I like I have a soft blanket that I'll throw on when I need it. I have fuzzy socks in the house, so I might be all business up here, but I trust there are some black and white fuzzy socks on my feet. Please don't tell. Uh, Dr. Cole, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, all of those, the mink blanket, soft throw, fuzzy socks, a brush, um, yeah. What about your sight? What do you look at? So I purposely put up art on my wall right at the beginning of this, you know, this one is called Truth by Kamasi Washington. This is pictures from my nieces and nephews. Um, I have, you know, rings and various things that I can look at that bring me joy from sight. So what, else, what things do you look at that bring you? The ocean, yes. And that can be the actual ocean or a good YouTube, YouTube ocean video or a good playlist with ocean sounds, to be clear. Waste speeds, I am a waste speed fan for also monitoring my health. And just also making me feel. Mm -hmm. And sound. I encourage you to have your playlist for all the things. Have your rage playlist when you need to burn stuff up or burn the midnight oil, as my mama would say. Um, have your calm playlist when you need to kind of get ease. Have your prayer playlist when you just need to surrender. Have your strategic cry playlist. When like, you know you need to cry, but like it's right, it's right here. But you know you just need a good, snotty, ugly cry because that could be very, 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 very therapeutic. And how many folks are into plants on this call? Any plant folks? Yeah, it's a lot of plant people, indeed. So I invite you to put in the chat. <laughs> I invite you to put in the chat the songs, you know, that like make you feel good that are like a bomb to your soul. Oh my gosh. I'm thinking of total praise now, you know, because that just takes me a couple of different places, you know. Yes, Rashade, Jill Scott, 
all the things. John Coltrane, Alice Coltrane, you know? But yeah. So, ooh, excellent is thy name. You're about to start church up in here. That's what you did. <laughs> so I did notice Frankie Beverly and Mays, all of the things. I think I'm gonna ask the moderators to, um, y'all should save this chat and make a, a National Council of Negro Women playlist, you know, um, that everybody can use. And I think that would be awesome. So I am going to, for the, the balance of our time, we're gonna kind of open up for questions as people have them. And then we're actually gonna, towards the end, we're gonna talk a little bit more should we talk about it now? Hmm. No, actually, let's talk about it now. That peace and purpose coloring book as one of these tools that we're talking about, right? Because that's your that's your touch, because there's some tactile in terms of actually getting in the little spaces. Um, there's some sight because you can get, you know, amazing with the color. There's some deliciousness with your your brain when you think of things. And so how many of you, <laughs> I see people co-signing on this um, NCNW playlist. Um, I see people holding up the book. Bunch of folks have the book around you, so I'm gonna share my screen a little. Yes, okay. So you don't need me to share the screen, but I'm gonna share it anyway because I, I'm just so excited about this thing, right? So can you see my version of it? Hi, yes, there's the book. It's so I love. Yes, Lionel Richie and Maisie Lewis, y'all are, y'all are. Mm, yes, for the books. So I love this peace and purpose, you know, meditation coloring book. And shout out to the illustrator, you know, Kareem Kenyatta, shout out to Created by Munson Steed, and yes, to the National Council of Negro Women for providing this for everyone, because this thing, like, um, if you, you know, flip through the different pages, take some time now if you haven't had a chance to, and there are all these opportunities to kind of just reflect and breathe and meditate and think about your peace and your purpose. Because again, about revolutionary acts and liberation, there are many forces, as you know, in this country over the years that don't want us to have any peace and don't want us to have the time to think about our purpose. Because, oh my goodness, when we get together and do all of those things, it's quite a thing. So I love these pictures. And then if you flip to the back, you'll see there are these exercises as well. Um, yes, for the beautiful, please read the beautiful introduction by our leader, Dr. Janetta B. Cole. It's so important to, to just get into all the reasons that this is here. But if you scroll, and I'm scrolling here, in the back you'll see some exercises that can help you think about it. You know how we were talking about silence earlier? Um, I know this, yes, for Gregory Porter, and he's got a new album out. Please absolutely get it. Um, absolutely, it's, it's a wonderful meditation, and he finished it during this particular time. So a lot of what we're feeling in terms of rage and sadness and joy and all of that is in that album. So I would say yes to that. But anyway, back to the coloring book, Peace and Purpose. So today I listened to the silence for 15 minutes. This is an exercise on page, what page is this? This is page 96. I listen to the silence for 15 minutes and with my eyes closed, I hold my hands across my chest and listen to my heart. A little bit of what we just did. But what is your heart telling you? Oh, I see, you see raised, um, yes, Barbara. Hmm? I saw a hand raised. They go in the chat. Coloring book would make a nice holiday again. Yeah. Okay. So I definitely invite you. I was having trouble moving it around the screen, but I definitely invite you to continue to to use that um, use that coloring book. Take it everywhere keep it and spend some time, maybe schedule a, some time every day, once a week to actually do it. So Barbara, did you have a question? Chat I'm looking. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. We're good here. This is a, well, thank you. I just want to make sure I wasn't missing anything. And so I looked at some of the questions that you all um, put in earlier, and a lot of folks submitted questions about how do you find work-life balance? 
Um, how do you find time for caring for yourself and create space for caring for others? Um, and I think the first thing, if we go back to grace and mercy, the first thing is to give yourself some grace and mercy on not having it completely perfect, especially in 2020 when so many things are happening. And for me, it's, um, and for a lot of the folks that I work with, it's, it's really helpful to one, have some partners that you can talk to. So you could probably find one or two folks that you know, if you don't have them in your circle already, that you can meet on this chat that can kind of help you check in on how to make sure you are taking care of your mind, body, spirit, career, family, and finances. And I'm a scheduled person. I'm a right brain, left brain. So I schedule in my breaks, my walks, um, my naps. I don't know if you, for those of you on Instagram, there's the nap ministry. Um, but all of those things. And also consider it, um, you know, again, part of your, like the flight attendant thing, when you're flying, you're putting your mask on first. Because I know when I'm tired and stressed, I can't I, do, I can't really fully affect my purpose. You know, I'm, I get a little bit jumbled up sometimes with the what I need to be doing. So the being quiet to kind of make sure that you're clear on your steps, but that also you prioritize time in there for these various things. Any of the tools that we mentioned earlier can be helpful. Does anybody else have? And I see people putting tools in the in the um. <clears throat> in the uh, chat. So definitely make an appointment with yourself <laughs> and keep it. And um, let someone else know that you're making that appointment with yourself too. I saw some questions about um, preparing for COVID. Now, what are we preparing for in this next wave? And let me just start by saying that um, one of the most important things you can do first is to right now, right now, get to know your body head to toe. Because the way you'll know if something shifts, whether it's COVID or stress or burnout or anything, is you'll see little differences in pain, you know, little differences in your breathing, um, challenges with your temperature. Um, but also in that kind of knowing how you are right now, if you have not made that doctor's appointment, whether it's telemedicine or whatever, if you haven't checked in with your wellness people, just get a good kind of how am I doing today? September 2020, so that you know. The second thing that I would say to prepare for COVID or the next wave or whatever's happening with the elections or all of the different things um, is to, you know, update your kind of health plan. So who are your people that you call, you know, for a wellness backup? Who's the person that you can call to say, I just need to cry, you know? And who's the person that you can call to say, I just need to holler with joy. Get that list going. And then I would say, get your home apothecary ready. All of them, make sure you have extra prescriptions. Make sure you have your, your ginger, whatever your home remedies are. Make sure you have your cold medicines and things like that and just get ready. Let's get it all ready and be ready. So with that, I think we'll take a few, a few questions live. Does anybody have any questions, comments, things they want to share, thoughts, concerns, testimonies? We will open and I think I'll ask my tech people to look for for hands. Ooh, technology. Okay, so someone put in I stopped watching TV. All of those things in moderation, right? Did I see you, Dr. Cole, jumping in? Oh, I've been with you, my dearest Dr. T, from <laughs> the moment you started to share. Oh, I love me some you. Mm, back at you. <laughs> Love mm. me from you. Mm, mm, mm. It's been a long, intense, and meaningful day. Mm, 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 mm. Bring closure on it in this way is just so fulfilling. Thank you. And thank you for the invitation and for having faith and trust in, in me and in us. And in us. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah. <laughs> hmm. Thoughts, testimony, questions, book recommendations. Hmm. You know, it's interesting. I actually love uh, my friend Dr. Brittany Cooper's book, Eloquent Rage. 
and it talks about like a, a, a black woman finding her superpower and it really helps on those days. Like we had a couple of those days this week where, you know, make you want to holla kind of thing. But it really talks about and helps you get through the stuff that, you know, did other people see this? Did other people see that? Are you as mad as I am? But um, I love how she talks about, um, you know, channel your rage the way Serena channels, channels her serve, right? To exact your purpose and put it out there. But there are ways also where that rage unchecked in your body, you know, starts to kind of mess with your health. And so I would say eloquent rage, grandmother's hands, some good fiction just to kind of escape from things for a second, you know, um, all of the things. And I invite other people to pop stuff in the chat too. In terms of like wellness, um, there's some really interesting, like I love looking online or looking at different podcasts, Therapy for Black Girls, you know, uh, Shauna Murray Brown out of Baltimore, please pop in because I feel like our evolving conversation is just delicious right now because it's centering blackness and joy and liberation in a way that I think is wonderful. Some other questions or thoughts? Let me pop in the chat here. Self-care, the vital art of nurturing you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yes, music everywhere. <laughs> I will definitely, I will um, thank you for the compliments on my voice. I've been told I got like a quiet storm kind of radio voice. That's again, my mama training me when I was 12 to do public speaking, but thank you. And I will share video links for additional meditations there. Ooh, how do you date during this pandemic or pursue love interests? That's an interesting one. Ooh, is that how much, how much time we got Dr. Cole? <laughs> um, be believe it or not, I actually, um, you know, the thing is kind of this, this quietness gives you a sense of what you need and what you don't need in terms of your dating, your intimacy, your friends, your family, all of the things. And so I would say, you know, take that opportunity to kind of really get clear because um, I personally don't have capacity for shenanigans. I'll just put it that way, <laughs> you know? Um, and with that, I actually had, um, I did have a date. I started dating someone and guess what? They brought me their COVID test results first. Ain't that a thing before we even said hi. So, but yeah, there are a bunch of virtual platforms, but I think, you know, just like we found different ways to use intimacy to get to know each other. You know, people are having more family chats. You know, how many of y'all have done family Zooms? You know, um, it's ways to kind of just really get in there. It was Brittany Cooper, um, B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y, Cooper, C-O-P-E-R, for Eloquent Rage. And yes, the limiting the news. So other questions, thoughts? Yes, the pandemic really gave me an opportunity to reflect on what I am grateful for. That actually almost like makes me tear up a little bit. Because I can tell you, every every day I can go from, you know, wanting to be on the floor in fetal position in tears or just hurting for my people, to like the joy and euphoria of connecting with sisters and brothers who are working on it fully in purpose and creating amazing art and, you know, looking at political strategy and Pan-Africanism and Afrofuturism, just all of this wonderful stuff. And so I think just kind of like being in that moment, we, we don't want our people to suffer um, and we can see the grace and the blessings and the joy. So like right now I've got some sciatic. Anybody ever had sciatica? I got like a little sciatica pain on my left, which is a little bit of a thing because I'm a dancer and I need to move my hips. But I see, I see thank you, Miss Virginia, for understanding me, for feeling me on the sciatica situation. Um, but I had to cry when I thought about how much people have checked in on me. You know what I mean? and how this isn't my first time doing this, so I know what to do. Um, and even if you just kind of sit, if it's given me a minute to be still and just be in wonder and awe. Other thoughts? Yes, for stretching a little, that's been a lot of time on the mat. Other questions? Can you speak out? Mm -hmm. 
Oh uh, yeah, it is. It's super frustrating to be in spaces where you don't feel like you can fully be yourself. So I'll just read Kimberly. Kimberly Hills on the job. When you speak out, you're the stereotypical angry black woman. If you don't speak out, you're stereotyped as the angry black woman, and it's frustrating. I don't feel like I can, I can truly be myself. So there is, for me as a family doc, I believe that is one of the things that gets at our health the most. This having to, having to suppress our full selves, you know. Um, and those of you who have been in this game for a while know there's a boat. There's many ways to kind of be your full self and your truth, and not necessarily have to tell everybody because not everybody's worthy of all of your brilliance or your energy or your emotion or your spirit. You know, you kind of dose it out where you feel. But like in this kind of what you really feel and how you really want to show up, the people who love you too much, like you got to find some spaces to be able to just say the thing. Um, I guess that's an affirmation. Don't worry about that. I'm okay. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. Can you hear somebody speaking? Go ahead. I do. I never realized after this stretching exercise that you mm -hmm. had us do. Mm -hmm. Because I haven't been wearing heels or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. I've been in the house. I've been out. Mm -hmm. But casually dressed. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, when I stretched my ankles and did all my toe things, and mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. wow, what is my skin doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to do that more often. I so thank, I'm so thankful that we had this session. Ooh, I'm so glad. I realized some things I need to do now. There it is. There it, it is, is amazing. Oh, Ooh, you all so did it. thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure, my joy. Absolutely. No, thank you. Thank you. And our skin, you know, how about our skin? Is this all these think about India Ari's song, Brown Skin, you know? Um, but yeah, that extra, some one meditation can be just getting with your foot or your hands and getting a nice warm wet towel and your favorite lotion or oil and just taking every, 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 right? Every toe and just do that. But thank you for saying that. Appreciate that. Other questions or thoughts? When you look into my hula, hula, hula. <laughs> bath soaks. Ooh, I am a bath fan. Look, I had to get into a point where I have a, a whole hardcore spiritual ritual every morning you know, some bath, some quiet, some candle, you know, something just to get really quiet, meditate, pray with my mom. Sometimes I call her in Southern Illinois just to get ready because the intensity of it is is that. But like, um, mm, let's talk about water for a second and the role of water in your meditation and wellness. So there's listening to water. Thank you for the scripture. Thank you. Thank you for the scripture. Yeah, so there's drinking a glass of water, right? Sometimes can just reset everything. There's um, a wet washcloth on your face when you're like kind of in between when you're dealing with those folks like you were talking about. Um, the woman who was talking about not being able to, to be yourself or having to show up in that particular way, just taking a break, putting some water on your face, whether you spray a little bit or do that can do it. Listening to water being next to water. I mean, there's a reason why all of these things kind of pop in. Pop in. Mm -hmm. pop in. Uh oh, was that me? And so I'm gonna keep looking at the the chat to see. And um, no. so I pop in. to close out here. I'm gonna play. I have some audio feedback. Let me check in with my tech people to see if everything's okay. You getting anybody else getting feedback? No, nope, just me. Okay. And so the title of this is we are talking about caring for ourselves, meditation, mindfulness, and joy. These as legit tools for our self-care, for our purpose, for our our lives, all of these wonderful things. Um, we talked about 
peace and purpose, the wonderful coloring book, the wonderful tool. I can't wait to, to get mine and get in there. Um, I love that this is the third or fourth um, different modality of that. Because for those of you that are painters and drawers and writers, there's something to just kind of getting out of your head and into your hands or getting out of your head and into your body when you dance or out of your head and into your spirits when you praise. Um, that really just um, do that. But yeah, so, but then there's this joy. We actually, we've talked about joy a little bit, but I want to get into joy a little bit more, you know? Um, joy is medicine for our, our sacred work, right? And also, it's one of those things where historically, as Black women, our joy has been policed, right? It's been shut down. It's and even then, folks on, don't want to see our too much, too much of our wiggle in our hips or moving around or whatever it is. And so, um, or want us to be so tied to to martyrdom or to pouring ourselves out or our dregs that we don't experience joy. So Black joy. Black girl joy is a revolutionary act. I was with one of my neighborhood nieces today and she had printed out some pictures and we're gonna put them on her wall. She was just giggling and happy. And I'm like, my job on this earth is to make sure she keeps that joy, you know? Um, so joy is a sacred act for yourself and for everyone else is, is absolutely a thing. And so a couple of um, months ago, my uh, Liberation Health Strategies team and I were asked to put together a meditation on joy to think about the joy of we, the joy of us all being together and how we use that as, as metaphor, medicine for our souls. And with my friends, Bernadette Pleasant, who's in New Jersey, Babadan Babatunde is one of the drummers from The Last Poets, you know, and Michaela Harrison, one of my besties, um, who's in actually in Brazil right now, but from DC, spent time in New Orleans. We put together a couple of things. And so to close us out a little bit, I'm actually gonna play a little bit of that video for you and I'll give you the link later. Just have you think about like joy and joy is medicine. And so we asked our crew to kind of be like, you know, what, what brings you joy, even in the hardest times? And I'll invite you to pop in the chat, you know, what it is that brings you, brings you joy and schedule time, make that part of your medicine as, as crucial as anything else. And so that being said, That being said, let me get ready to share this screen here. I see my brother, Baba Don. You're gonna hear some drums first. So I invite you to get ready and move around and shake if you need to. And then we're gonna cool it out and decrescendo into the end of our session, okay? So I'll give you a second to get comfortable. Yes, for my grandson. Yes, for the early morning meditation. And I apologize for those of you that I'm not able to see because I'm, reading and all the things, but I'll, I'll do my best to catch it all. And I will be on the app as well. All right. So I've been teeing up this video for a while. Here we go. And I'll ask my tech people to let me know. this joy through singing. So I'm gonna share one of the songs that came through in a beautiful joy moment that feels like it syncs up really well with this moment. Joy, joy is my Your 
time together. So if you have any questions, please feel free to share them with me in these last couple minutes that we have. Um, I thank you. I thank you all so much for everything you do. Um, thank you for being. Thank you for breathing. Thank you for accepting your assignments. You know, I appreciate you um, so very much. Thank you again, Dr. Cole, for inviting me to serve. Um, it's a blessing to me. And within our final four minutes, I would always love to, love to, love to, you know, give you that four minutes just to kind of chat and just hang out with each other. That's, you know, this is like the end of the meeting before folks walk out the door to leave and where they're just kind of talking. So, you know what? I'm fine with that. I am fine with that. This is the link to the video. The joy of way. And um, be good to yourselves. Give yourselves lots of grace and love. This moment requires it. And you deserve it all. Thank you. Mm. I'm just going to hang out here with y'all for the last couple minutes. <laughs> My NCNW sisters, I am feeling so much joy. And I just want to share, I want to share this. I had the almost indescribable privilege of knowing our Shiro, Dr. Maya Angelo knowing her well enough to address her respectfully as Dr. Maya and to receive the gift of her calling me quite simply sister. Imagine how many books Dr. Maya signed over the course of her life. We know she wrote countless countless books that, that we still feed on. But here's what I want to share, Dr. T. She signed, she autographed every book with only one word, J-O-Y, exclamation, Maya, Angelo. It's as if that one word could capture both a current feeling and a journey toward that feeling. But if we, in the middle of this intensely challenging time, can still find joy. What a blessing. And you, dearest Dr. T, have brought us joy tonight. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my pleasure. Hmm. 
Well, there's our time, folks. Thank you so much, Dr. Cole. You all, <laughs> much love to every single one of you. Enjoy, mm -hmm. enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ashe, Ashe, mm -hmm. Ashe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good night. Can you tell we don't want to leave? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we don't have to. Maybe we just remain connected mm -hmm. even though we leave the meeting. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Dr. T. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. This is my piece. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, <laughs> this is Dashan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So lovely. You're wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.